Alright, hello everyone, Simon here, welcome back to our playthrough of Shadowrun Hong Kong. Let's, uh, talk to people. We just came back from, uh, not getting a laser gun. So I looked up on the internet, the laser gun that we could have kept last mission would have been a 20 damage sniper rifle. So 20 damage, slightly more accurate than normal guns. But it only holds three rounds before you need to reload it. So uh, low capacity, 20 damage is pretty good, but it's a sniper rifle. And the thing with these Shadowrun games is that you don't often engage enemies at long distance. And so, um, like, it's of limited utility. And especially since I'm not a gun guy, the only gun guy we have is Duncan. So, so I would have to give it to Duncan. And Duncan's not an amazing gun guy anyway. Um, apparently, if you don't keep the rifle, then along the way, in the other missions, you'll get some help from, like, runners. Uh, that's not very significant either, so either way, it is not a, it's not a big deal. Alright, let's go ahead and check our computer. New messages in the inbox. Auntie Chang and Josephine. From Gobbit to SCKC, subject Auntie Cheng and Josephine. Hey Seattle. I think I can add a little context to that thing between Auntie and Josephine Sang. You know, the thing that makes Auntie hit the source and talk revenge. This is a combo of stuff I heard and stuff I put together myself, so your mileage may vary. For years, the Yellow Lotus acted as tax collectors within the Ward City. Since the Ward City was built by Josephine Tang and the Josephine Sang and the Yellow Lotus was run by Auntie Cheng. They must have had a working business relationship for a while at least. From what Nightjar told me, he was her favorite. You got that right. Auntie was known as a real up and comer back then. She was on the fast track to be the next Yellow Lotus 438. That's a big deal gig, Seattle. Money and power galore. Now you need to know that there were a lot of triads and corps doing biz in the Ward City. <laughs> really. All sorts of stuff. Sometimes, sometimes they work together nicely and sometimes people get bloody. The way I heard it, Auntie came up with some sort of grand plan to consolidate business in the Ward City. The power would be split between the Yellow Lotus and Zhang's company, and everyone else would get cut out. If her plan worked, Auntie would rise in the Lotus like nobody's business, and Josephine Sang would make big, big, uh, would make long bank. There was a catch, though. In order for the plan to work, both women need, would need to jump through a lot of hoops. There'd be street-level maneuvering and power plays on Auntie's side, on Auntie's side, and blackmail and negotiations on corporate, on the corporate level from Josephine Sang. My info gets sketchy here. From what I've pieced together, Sang went behind Auntie's back and took her plan to her boss, a 438 named Wong Lun Fat. They cut Kindly out of her own plan. But Kindly is still here. Why'd Sang do that? My guess is that she saw Auntie as some sort of threat. People in the know say that Wong Lun Fat is weak and greedy. She can be manipulated if her palm remains well greased. Long story short, power was consolidated in the Ward City, just like Auntie planned, only she didn't wind up getting any of it. Her climb up the Lotus Ladder came to an abrupt halt. She's still a straw sandal, just like she was before. Before Zhang backstabbed her, and now she's stuck in Hioya like a fly in amber. I'd be pissed too if it were me. Okay, so... So Kindly Chang has power in Hioya. I guess she doesn't have authority in the Ward City. Hmm. But would you want? Why would you want the Ward City? The Ward City is it's a slum. Um alright, so job strategy, Shadow Lens BBS. Let's go uh This is basically Shadow the, the Shadowrun version of Reddit, right? <laughs> Thread looking for Decker. I mean, there's Deckers everywhere on Shadowlands. Looking for experienced Decker for a discreet milk run on a low-level corporate lab, potential for a longer-term arrangement. We are a team that's been together for years, running your basic heist and the occasional transport gig. We've got a reliable fixer and long list of heavy clients. 
Requirements, you must not take experimental stims during runs. Two, you must have a good sense of humor. Give me some New Year 888. Weren't you just looking for a decker a little while back? I saw your ad, but I was wrapping up a one-time run with an old partner who's moved away. I'd be interested in meeting. Isn't Muffin Top Ninja your phys ad? Your physical... Uh... Adept. Did someone call my name? <laughs> Muffin Top Ninja. Hey, MTN. Long time no beer. We gotta catch up, Sensei. Bring me on as your decker. I guess the kid who answered your last ad didn't work out. Uh, that's an understatement. I think we can count on you not to not consume any drugs during runs. Most specifically, drugs that were part of the payload. Fatal experimental drugs that were part of the payload. <laughs> Ouch. That's not even a rookie error, it's just a lack of common sense. A real shame, that. Anyway, I'm glad you're on board runs. We're not gonna have a problem with you. Alright, good. Straight wanna trade eyes would take anything. <laughs> I acquired a huge supply of cutting edge cybernetic eyes. My fans did a runner, so I've got eyes up to my eyeballs, as it were. Make me an offer. <laughs> it's got eyes. Uh, this, he, has, he has too many eyes. You know what I mean? They've got the whole nine yards. 2010 vision, camera, low light, and thermographic models. One size fits all, sold in pairs only, boxed set. <laughs> Colors brown, blue, violet, hazel, green, green flecked with gold, chrome, and you've got to install them yourself. <laughs> Trade you a Ranger Arms SM3, comes with a matching briefcase. Uh huh. Theo, message me. Can I swap you my old cyber eyes for a new set? <laughs> Seriously, anything but that. <laughs> Can I buy one blue and one brown eye? <laughs> no, but you can buy two pairs, sheesh. <laughs> Uncle C's House of Pork? If anybody ever has the hankering to go to Uncle C's House of Pork in Tayo, I can only say one thing, for the love of all that's holy, don't. I haven't been able to leave my house in two days, the only reason I can even post here is because of the Arias override on my deck. Where'd you eat? Maybe you're just unlucky. All I had was some shumai and ribs. That's pretty basic and hard to mess up. Unlucky is when I get a bad, bad orange at the market. This isn't unlucky. This is something else. This is some kind of vile gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal sorcery. Oh my god, I only ate there once. Once! I still have nightmares. It felt like I'd eaten a wasp nest if the wasps were made of rusty razors and also on fire. <laughs> I thought I was being clever by getting the pulled pork sandwich when I ate there. Nope. Aside from basically being a pound of congealed sludge and the bread being moldy, it was a week before I could hold down anything more solid than congee. What, are you all a bunch of children? Yeah, the kitchen is dirty, but I've eaten there dozens of times, not, and not once have I gotten sick. Grow up and learn to eat adult food. <laughs> Rat star, one, two, three. <laughs> Wait a second, aren't you the person who was raving about food cart? About that food cart on the corner, corner of Kimberley and Observatory? You told me to get the Yuzu Glazed Horse Tripe? <laughs> Yuzu Glazed Horse Tripe! <laughs> it's literally horse tripe. Yeah, how'd you like it? Pretty good, huh? If by good you mean the consistency of tie and old tires, yes, the tripe must have been a week or more old. And I'm pretty sure I smelled rot once the initial citrus blast wore off. Take note, this user's advice on food is not to be trusted. <laughs> Oh god, reading that actually got me to push past the RAS override. Now my deck is covered in vomit. Thanks guys, I mean it. Nothing I love more than being sick and disgusting. Uh huh. Yeah, street food in Hong Kong is uh... I mean, most of the time it's okay. <laughs> it's a bit of a gamble though. Uh, Thread Ward City Embezzlement History. I'm uploading another Ward City report, this one old, from just after they built it. I ended up digging into the history of the place, it's just archival plain text. Now oh, it's Isabel. Consolidated Press Hong Kong Desk. Zhang Mechanical Services, Zhang, was again accused of a joint lawsuit. Accused in a joint lawsuit, headed by Wu Xing Incorporated, of embezzling hundreds of millions of new yen during the construction of the Ward City Low Income Housing Project. 
the plaintiffs filed an official complaint on Monday stating that construction contractors had been heavily pressured by Zhang to use cheap construction techniques, while kickbacks, graft, misrouting of funds, and, and misrouting of funds caused several hundred million new yen to vanish. Zhang's legal team strenuously objected to the accusation, citing lack of proof and the corporate corporation's own damaged fortunes. Legal team Li Kui, Kui Shan had this to say. The Ward City contract was a disaster disaster for my client. The project was sabotaged at every turn by union activists and competing corporations. TMS struggled heroically to complete the project despite this interference. These parties have now added insult to injury by fabricating charges of malfeasance based on the very obstacles which they themselves created. This has truly become theater of the absurd. Is it true? According to Consolidated Press financial analysis Gertrude Schoen, it seems unlikely. Zhang has struggled financially since the Ward City project. Zhang stock, ticker symbol TMQ, Hong Kong and Tokyo exchanges, is trading at around 40% of its peak, which it reached last, which it reached just after receiving the Ward City contract four years ago. Although investigators have indicated there is no evidence of possible misconduct, no misappropriated funds have been found. And CEO Josephine Tsang recently sold her Victoria Peak estate, citing financial difficulties. If TMS or the Tsang family have benefited from stolen Wall City funds, they are not showing it. Miss, Mrs. Tsang could not be reached for comment. Huh, I always thought that Tsangs rocketed to success on the back of the Wall City. They showed Trump with that in their PR. Yep, it's a brilliant piece of historical revisionism. The Wall City was a huge loss of face at the time. But somehow they've rebranded the whole fiasco over the last couple of decades. Maybe their underbidding made them seem like a real sucker and brought in the contracts. Hmm. Isabel, I find the fact that you posted a financial article quite, to be quite charming. White Prism, did you just hit on ISO? Amonita's gonna skin you. What? Mm, uh, no, that's just WP, he's incapable of flirting. Would you date a woman named Amonita and then try to charm someone else on the BBS? <laughs> WP is just an aggro mentat with, with a poor social filter. You two must have an interesting relationship. Let's just say that we radically compliment each other. What does that mean? Alright, go back. Open jobs directory, so... Four active jobs. I should do some of this stuff, right? Artifact liberation, attending a party, restaurant job, geomantic sabotage. The guy in uh, the mahjong parlor was the party one, right? Or was it the restaurant one? No, it was the party one. Does it matter if I just leave him hanging for a few more missions? Duncan, you enter to find Wu skating the floor, stalking the floor silently, one hand held rigidly near his hip, the other flexing and unflexing again and again. When he notices you, he nods once and goes back to his caged panther routine. Uh, you're gonna wear a hole in the floor that way. Wu keeps pacing. Need something? Uh, yeah, a drink. Looks like she could use one too. I hear Club 88 has two for ones between 4 and 6 o'clock, but you have to drink them both. I don't put drugs or alcohol into my body. Uh... I'm just gonna let that go. I mean, that, why are we talking about this? I take it you're stewing about Josephine Zhang. That's right, I'm thinking about what she did to our family, what she did to Carter. His pace increases a bit. It's time for the old Duncan to come out and play. Is it? Wu's eyes smolder. Here's what we do. We walk into Zhang's headquarters and ask for the boss. When she comes down, we grab her, take her somewhere quiet, and ask her why she had Carter and those runners killed. Find out what happened to Raymond, whether he's alive or dead. What happens next is up to her. I don't think you've quite thought this through. Uh, kidnap a member of the Hong Kong Executive Council while there's an APB out on us. 
It's bold. They never see it coming. This is the way to go. My way. <laughs> now, where have I heard that before? What? My way? That's right. There's one way this is gonna go. He catches himself. Understanding appears in his eyes. Oh, crap. That's what Ray used to say. Raymond Black, our, be our benevolent dictator. No questioning his rules, no falling short of his expectations. It was his way or, or the wrong way. Or oh, you'd get the full-on Raymond treatment. What is the Raymond treatment? I didn't care to be on the receiving end of that, and I was more than once, that's for sure. You remember what happened a few years after we moved out of the squad and into his house? The thing with Double Trey and Lockjaw when he accused us of relapsing back to our back into our old ways. Man, that was when Ray's authority finally got tested. His raspy baritone is tinged with satisfaction when I finally stood up to him. Uh yep, the way he handled that was part of the reason why I eventually left he just wouldn't listen. He could be pretty rigid, but then again you both could be. He couldn't hear a word you were saying, I'd never seen him so angry. Yeah, anyway, I'm just gonna... That's why I left. I thought that might have been part of it, To be, f but to be fair, I wasn't listening either. That was our pattern, wasn't it? I wouldn't listen, he wouldn't listen. Then we butted heads, rinse and repeat once every few weeks. He smiles, but it's filled with regret. But that time was the worst. Sounds pretty toxic, to be honest. His face settles into expression of resignation. Okay, Mr. C. We don't need to do things my way. No need for us to butt heads. He stretches, you can hear his joints crack, and on that note, I'm gonna have to ask you to clear out. It's been a long day. Has it? <laughs> I haven't brought you on any missions. <laughs> I'm getting the feeling that they're all gonna be long days. Yeah, I'm getting that feeling too. Anyway, have a good night, Simon. I'll catch you tomorrow. I don't Duncan. I don't know if Duncan adds anything. <laughs> what does he add? All right, Isabel. As you step into Isabel's cabin, she turns to face you. The desk that she's been working on, she's been working at, is a mess. Food wrappers and computer expansion cards lie together in a heap. Well, that's not good. Isabel herself doesn't look much better. Her eyes are badly bloodshot and her lips have been drawn into a deep frown. You're back, hey. She shoves a box of assorted mounting screws aside with her foot. What do you need? How are you holding up? Not great, I'll manage. Don't climb up on me, tell me what's going on. So, is there anything I can do to help? Is there anything that I can do? I seriously doubt it. I appreciate the offer though. Uh -huh. When I unlocked those memories, I told you that they were crystal clear, right? Every detail was perfect. It's still that way, and I think it always will be. Yeah, because those memories were not. Uh, why? I know that it feels that way now, but always is a long time. Then I guess the question is, if the memories aren't going to change, can you adapt to living with them? If the memories aren't going to change... Can you adapt to living with them? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> it's like having an eidectic memory. I'm stuck with a perfect record of every shitty thing that I saw and felt during my childhood in hell. It's not an easy thing to live with. Um... Why not just lock the memories away when you're not using them? You have the key, just unlock them again when we need them. If the memories are this painful for you, you can lock them away again. After all this is over, you can throw away the key. 
that's what I'm hanging on to. The fact that I can pitch my childhood again and forget the thing that I saw. All the more reason to get through this mistress with the Ward City quickly. And speaking of which, if you wanted to ask me questions about that place, you can go ahead, alright? I think that I've had enough time to process what's in my head. I should be able to give you some answers. Not all the answers, mind you, but something. Alright, question. How did you get out of there when you were a kid? How did you escape? She heaves a sigh. Goblet let me out. Led me out. How she managed that? The the avatar raises a hand, but she's not in the avatar mode. Go ahead and ask her. I'm sure she'll be happy to brag about it. But I think we have more pressing matters to discuss. All right. Didn't I have another question about the War City? No. <laughs> Why you can't ask? Oh, the game just locks the questions behind Pro. This is so awkward. It's so incredibly awkward. I guess we have to like do another mission and then come back and then we have more questions to ask about it. That's wild. Alright, any thoughts on the last run? I'm pretty happy with how that turned out, mostly because with Ares the alternative is leaving in a body bag, especially when you're stealing a prototype laser. Good pay for a night's work, and that's what this is what this business is all about. If you can walk away and get paid, it's been a good job. I kinda wish we kept the laser because hey, it's a laser, that's awesome. But you did the decent thing, really. You helped those runners out, let them keep their rep, and both of us could get paid. That's a good quality in a team leader, and I'm glad I've got you running the show. Alright. Good, because I've had enough for one day, I'm tired. Reliving this stuff is, is exhausting. Come back later if you want. I'll have more time to unpack this stuff by then, but until then, please give me some space. <laughs> she says we can ask her questions. We ask her, how do you, how do you get out? And then she says, go ask, Gobbit. And then we have no more things to ask her. <laughs> uh, the, the, the dialogue sequencing is a little odd. 